Yes, so hello, I'm uh, Matthias Wadman, uh, and I'm going to go talk about this tool that I've been working on for two years, something. It's a bit fuzzy. I did a lot of prototyping before, but maybe two years seriously working on the project. Uh, so some background. <coughs> I uh, work at the company, a streaming company, so I work with ingestion and transcoding, so we, I deal with a lot of media files that comes from all, all kinds of sources with very, very varying quality. Uh, so we have to, when the transcoding fail or it looks strange with colors or time, timestamps or whatever is going wrong, then we have to somehow figure out what's, what's the, what, what is wrong with these media files. Uh, <clears throat> so, so previously, uh, we used to use a lot of tools like FF Probe, Graphic Magics, and for down media info. Even Wireshark can decode media files. It's a bit strange, but it can. <laughs> uh, and then usually, what would happen was that you take these tools and they output something. They they usually output in a format that is very different between different programs. So then you have to write scripts to convert it into like a common format, like JSON or something, and then you put that into some tool to be able to do queries. So you use JQ, grep, SQLite, awk, whatever was available. So, uh, and then also when, when you figure out what maybe had just some hints, what's going wrong, then you use other tools to actually find where, how to find the actual part of the file that is wrong. So you used like hexfiend, this is like a hex editor, structured hex editor. Uh, or hex dump and DD or cat or yeah all the the usual uh, and I'm also very interested personally in these things so <laughs> and I'm also a, a, like a programming language nerd I would guess <laughs> so uh, so I had this uh, wish list once that I wanted to I want to see like everything about this picture except the picture that's like that's because when when you work with the uh, in transcoding, I nearly never look at the video, so I just look at the. Yeah, I look. I want to see everything else. I don't want. I don't care about the content, like what it is. I just want to see what it, everything else. So I had this like a uh, wish for an. Uh, have you used the, the command line to file that you can run file on the file, <laughs> and it just tells you this is a JPEG with this resolution. So I wanted like a, I wish I just had a tool that I can just run this command on the file and just showed me nearly everything about the file. Uh, and I wanted like a, like a debugger, if you have used, to, if you have a software engineer and you want to like nearly, you want to nearly step into the program so you can be inside the program. That's the feeling that I wanted when I was designing this. I want to step into the media file or the binary file and feel like I'm walking around nearly and poke around. Uh, and I wanted some kind of query language to be able to do like uh, select out things or aggregate or some like SQL-ish things. Uh, and I also wanted to like, have some kind of way of address, like have addressing. So I can like symbolically talk, like ask questions about, uh, I want the tense frame or the last frame or things like that. And I also wanted, because I've written a lot of uh, decoders in my life, so I, have, so I wanted the uh, something that could support the nest, because I know that these uh, media formats, they, they usually are nesting other formats inside, like a container has an AC frame that has a, yeah, so do you, you want to like write that decoder once and then you want to reuse that decoder in, yeah, that's how FFmpeg is designed also, it's like, so it's like, yeah, that's a, a no-brainer, it should be like that. Uh, and I also wanted a, a, like a DSL kind of, like domain-specific language for so it kind of looks like you're nearly writing a specification when you, so you can nearly take the, uh, you can look up the AVC specification, nearly, nearly copy and paste and just change it into code more or less, and it should just work. And those uh, specifications, they are usually, those formats are very dense, like they are bit packed, <laughs> very, so you, you can't use, you can't rely on byte binders, I think. So you have, so I wanted the code that can just take care of all the, nitty gritty byte things. So I started looking into, because I knew a lot about JQ, 
which is a query language for JSON. So I knew that if I could make that work together with a with a with a, with a like a structural hex viewer or editor, it would be great. And I did a lot of tries, and I think I figured out how to do it, and it seems to work. Uh, so I can talk a bit about J JQ. I guess most people have used, seen it at least. In a, it's usually for ident indenting JSON. <laughs> you just run JQ, and then the JSON file in, and you get like it. It's uh, it nicely indented the JSON. But J JQ is actually a tool, and it's also a programming language. So what uh, J this JQ tool does is that it takes J JSON as input, and it runs a J JQ program or a filter they call it. And then it just gives you JSON back. So it's like transformed it in some way. Or usually you don't do anything. You just, you just run this dot. That's why we have a dot sometimes when you run JQ. It's just an identity function. Uh, so, um, so, yeah, so JQ is a, 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 it's a superset of JSON. So all JSON is, is valid JQ filters. Uh, and it's also uh, maybe the, the strangest things about JQ is that it's a function language that is based on generators and backtracking. Uh, and maybe the sim if you have programmed other languages, uh, it's kind of like if you're in Python when you have yield. In JQ, you always yield. That's like the standard. There's not even a keyword for it. It's like, oh, comma is kind of yield in JQ. So you, you, you always. Uh, it's like all function expressions can return zero values. That means like no value, or one or more. So every expression can do can do this. And it's uh, it comes from a language called Icon that used to. That's very long. It's like from the eighties. That is inspired by this. Uh, so you can see here are some examples here. Here is uh, you can read it as this like a prompt kind of, and then you see what how JQ would. Interpret this. So it's like literals, numbers are just numbers, strings are strings, and an array is just an array. But then you see down here when you create an, an object literal, so you can see that you can start to do arithmetics here and it just calculates to six. So you can do uh, those kind of things. And then you see the, and here's the usual syntax for how you use this uh, pipe operator. You kind of, you, it works kind of like shell scripts with a pipe that you have like an implicit. Input argument, so you don't have to. You don't have to talk about the first argument because that's always implicit. So this this uh, this expression is the literal hello, and then you like call the function length on the hello, and then you pipe it to the next one. And dot here is the identity, so it's going to be five because that's the length of hello, and then it times two, so it's ten. That's like the so it's like the language is built to. Be able to do this be very composable. You just keep on adding more and more pipes. Oh, and I have some more slides how this works, but we, we can skip because that's too much details. Um, so uh, FQ was built inspired by this. So I, I joke that it's like the binary indenter, which kind of makes sense. That it does. Uh, so it instead of just JSON, it can actually take J, like binary in. Or it can take JSON, or it even supports XML and other things. And then it runs a JQ program, and then you can get out, you can get binary out, or you can get like a fancy hex dump. I will show you how it looks. Or you can get JSON out also, of course, because you can, it's just JQ. And it supports a lot of input formats, 108. I think last time I checked now, half of them are media related somehow. And uh, FQ also has. Uh, some ad additional standard library functions co compared to JQ so that, are, that are convenient to have. Uh, and we can, I can skip the details about the code value. And, and it also, it also re-implements re nearly all of JQ's CLI interface because that's very, it's, it's nicely designed, so I just stole that idea. Uh, and it also has an interactive like a REPL, if you know what uh, read, uh, evaluate, print loop. <laughs> so it's just a, it's like the bash has a REPL when you write. It just evaluates and then it asks you to type something else, type something else. Uh, so, so here is a, like a graph over all the formats that are supported. And you can even, it knows how they are connected. So you can show a graph here. So you can see that this is uh, MP4. I think this is Matroska. 
And you can see how they are depending on using other formats. So you can see some, some of the chains become very long. They are even recursive, so they go around, they are circular. Uh, and this is all the, the media formats that are supported currently. So you can see that they are. So you can see, for example, that FLAC is, uh, is actually split up into uh, like the logical parts of a FLAC file. So there's like a FLAC format that just uses other FLAC form format decoders. Uh, so, and this is like basically how we use it. Uh, now I will think I will do a demo how to use this. So the tool is, uh, is just a CLI tool, and it looks, it looks and feels very much like JQ, and you can do help, and if you do, let's say, I think I have an MP3 file here. So if you just run this on, an, on, an, of a, on some kind of file, you will, and you just use the dot, which is like, don't do anything, just show me, <laughs> then it will actually show you just the, like the root level of the need of the file. So here it shows that there is a header, there are one headers, and there are three frames, and then there are no footers. Uh, so you can, uh, we can do an interactive. So now I open the file in, like in, in a REPL mode instead. So now you can do the same thing, just dot. So now I don't have to, now I can just type. So you can do, uh, let's say we want to look at the first, uh, uh, MP3 frame here. So, so now you can see how uh, FQ has uh, decoded this, and it also shows you uh, like symbolic representations of things. So you can see that uh, the bit rate is fantasy 56 kilobit, and that is actually in the file this is encoded as four, but that's kind of useless for a human. So it actually has uh, translated it to 50. This is what what it makes sense for us to see. So, but I was going to open uh, MP4 file instead, I think. So here is an MP4 file. And the MP4 files, I don't know if you know about, they are like a, a structure of boxes, uh, a tree of boxes. So here, are, so they are represented here as, a, uh, <coughs> as arrays like an arrays of boxes that have boxes at the top, yeah. So you see the first box is an, the, the typical f tip box, which has brand brands, so you can see them here if you want to. And you can also convert these things into JSON if you just want to have it as a... So, ah, maybe I should show that. The, this, the view here is that the, the, the thing you see here is just uh, the same as hex dump or anything. This is like a... Uh, hex representation or where in the file this is. So you can see that these, these bytes are ftip in the file. And then you have a ASCII representation here also. So these are like the same, the same bytes in the file represented in two ways. And on the right is a, like a logical tree of how it's actually structured. Uh, so let's see. I was thinking we're going to do a demo where I calculate the aspect ratio of the video track in this file. Uh, so I will use, maybe it will go a bit fast, but hopefully <laughs> you can. So there's a, FQ has a function called grep, and this has a version of it called grep by, which it takes a condition, so you can, so you can give it like a, uh, you give it like a lambda, that is like a, con this kind of like a condition. You can run code here to say, what, what, what are you looking for? So I tell here, I tell FQ that I'm looking for boxes that are called track, which are tracks. So here it finds two tracks. Uh, and then I want to, because I know how MP4 files work, so I can say, so I find the, the two track boxes. One of them is the video and one is the audio. I know I want, only want the video. So I want to, I know that there's a, there's a box called handler that is under the track box that tells you that this is video. So then I can, Say so for each track box, uh, I think it's called handler. Yes, here. So there's it. this is the thing that tells in an MP4 file that this is video. So I can do id. What did it say? Id. So so now I just uh, it says true or false because one of them is video, one is audio. So then you can do in JQ, you can say, you can use something called select, which is like it, uh, 
uh, so it's based on this this condition it can uh, it can give you or not give you something so it it outputs it doesn't output the thing if it doesn't make sense so okay okay so this so now we are back to the track again but this is the on the track that is video so now i know that uh, in in the in the under the track track uh, box there is another box called uh, i think it's called tk track header yeah and here is the here is the width so if I want to calculate the aspect ratio, I could do this. So this is the aspect ratio of the. So what you what I usually do is that I use the the REPL to, to kind of like play around and figure out how to how to write the query to find this, and then I usually usually quit out, and then, then remove the interactive version and then just cut here, and then you can run it on this. Or you can just tell a FQ to do it on all the MP4 files in this directory. So there was, I think there's a big, big back button here also. So that one is a bit wider. <laughs> uh, so I can try to see, uh, let's see. So uh, another thing with the FQ is that I want to be able to, because the, the idea is to use FQ to also automate a lot of things. Because I, what if I have hundreds of files and I want to do a query all of them to find like a specific one that is, is different from the others or do so it's like it has support for uh, it has support for multiple inputs and one way you do it is that if you don't say anything it just runs the same query on all of them but uh, there's a way where you can tell uh, FQ to not read anything you do that dot n and it tells you I don't read anything then then it's up to the query to how am I finding <laughs> Okay, maybe I will skip this, but oh, actually, I have it here. I think I prepared it here. So this was the query I was going to write you. You can do this instead, and then you can you can actually make it build. Uh, so here I got an object out with just the file name and the aspect ratio. So it just told FQ to oh, using a JQ filter to build this. So uh, yeah, then I don't think I have time for more. If you want to have questions, then I guess there are time. I could have now. Thank you so much. This looks like an amazing tool, and I can think of a thousand it's, ways I can use it. It's, it's, it's all open source, and I want people to help me write the coders, please. Or documentation or anything, or just use it. Tell me what doesn't make sense. I wonder if we have any questions. Yeah? Any questions? Do you want to say? Um, this is really, really cool. Uh, oh, sorry, Kieran O'Leary from the National Library of Ireland. Um, did you ever, um, was there any point in the early design of it where you thought of it as maybe that it could accept input from things like Media Info, Media Trace, FF Probe, uh -huh. uh, and, and rely on those decoders? Mm -hmm. Or is there something in, in the design of this where it's like you just have to write your own decoders and that's the uh, easiest? I think the, the idea is that the, the DSL is built in a way so that it, uh, it automatically keep track of where you are in the file for you so it kind of needs to be it would be if some, some of the other ones can can export uh, like the bit ranges for all their fields then you could probably do it but I haven't really looked I actually in the beginning I actually tried to use hexfiend for this and try to kind of make hexfiend be able to import because the problem with hexfiend is just too slow it's with, you write the decoders in TCL which is just yeah, I, I didn't say this is written in Go, so so it's it's quite fast. I would say for it's fast enough for what it's doing. It's it's using so much memory anyway, so it's like it's not IU or decoding is not the problem at all. It's just yeah, you decode one bit and then it will have to take have the name and the range and the symbolic representation. So it's that yeah, yeah, it just decoding time and everything just dwarfs memory allocation when you run it. So so it's not memory efficient. If someone wanted to contribute to your project, maybe add some formats or wrappers that aren't covered, is that possible? Mm, the, you, yeah, you write it in a, it is Go code, but uh, the, code, the code is very, you don't have to know much Go to write the decoder. Uh, because the DSL takes care of most, you just like, list more or less, uh, the code is, the code is, the code is. So, uh, if we have time, I can look at one of the coders if you want. <laughs> Well, more question here. Uh, practically, it's a, a one and a half question. <coughs> uh, 
uh, one question is uh, uh, do you can also show the individual timestamps and all kinds of timestamps uh, because uh, as far as I know there is a different uh, kind of timestamps inside the file so can we see that and uh, the half question is do you think that uh, this can be in some way used to repair some broken files mm. yeah, for the first question it, it depends on the like for example the mp4 decoder that the, the timestamps will be in this stts box i think it's called and then i think there are other then and that and that box is decoded so it just you will get the list of all the timestamps for all the samples so it's up to you to to do something with those you can see them you can see them Mm, yeah, yeah, you can, you can, you can fix. I have uh, fixed broken files with this, or even broken files <laughs> in a way that I want it to be broken. Because we you want to use, if you want to use, uh, you want to do regression tests, or you want to reproduce weird crashes or things. So that's very, very useful to be able to see exactly. You can actually modify things with FQ, but it's. Uh, it's, you can't just say like change this value to this. You have to like slice into bit ranges, and uh, it's a bit complicated. To... Including for more file? Yeah, yeah. The, 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 it's called MP4 decoder, but it, it, it decodes also QuickTime and Move and all the ISO BMFF files, kind of ish files. That's wonderful. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. We really appreciate a round of applause.